Good morning. Um, I'm uh, doing my study and recording today from my office. Um, we had a closure today, but I wanted to come in and uh, just kind of wait on some of our drivers uh, that are out there in the field. And so we still have a few that are on the road. And so I just wanted to make sure they got back safely. But uh, just want to share with you a little bit about uh, what we were talking about last Wednesday, and that was the uh, how do you how do you handle stressful situations, and what does and what does the Bible say about taking on this stress? So, uh, as we begin, let's have a word of prayer, then and, and we'll get into our study for for this Wednesday, for this Bible study session. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for the day you give us, and we pray for all those who must be on the road traveling and, and even the cold lord there's many that might not have the uh, adequate heat but father we ask you to provide for them lord that you will just keep us all safe during this wintry weather lord thank you for continued answered prayers and continued direction for our lives and lord even the things that we go through as we go through them guide us and comfort us and give us instruction Thank you for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I'm reading out the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. And this is one of those very, very familiar verses. Uh, and I, I want to read, I want to go ahead and read this passage. It's again in Isaiah chapter 40. And it says, I'm going to start in verse 28. It says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth, youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint the last time we talked a little bit about about stress and what stress what it is and it's it's there is again we we described it as that that gap between what we're expected to do and then how we can do it and sometimes the, the stress becomes overwhelming because, again, it may be a lack of time. It may be a lack of uh, knowing what to do or how to do it. Um, you know, those have been some things in my personal life that I, you know, I can really identify with, uh, especially during times that, like, at things that I, I've had to do at home. Um, sometimes there's been slight emergencies where I've had to do stuff outside, like plumbing things. Um, I learned how to do some things in plumbing that that averted major major catastrophes for us at home. But uh, you know, and, and those times are stressful. And so, uh, but other there's other things that happen to us. You know, it may be again uh, related to our health. It may be related to getting the kids where you need to get them to in time. Um, you know, I, I have a, you know, we have Miranda in our, you know, uh, in our care and our, well, in our family, our daughter, I guess. Um, well, I know she is, but she's got so many different things and things that she's a part of. And so trying to get her there, uh, is sometimes a challenge. And especially if there's something that happens right after practice, we, uh, we want to get her there on time and, um, uh, you know, there's there's activities, there's tests, there's all kinds of things that she's involved with, and so getting her there is is, is a priority for us. But again, there are other things in life that cause us to be under the uh, the pressure of that stress. It, it's not uh, it's not it's not sinful like we talked we talked about last time to to be under stress. Uh, but it can become an issue when we let those things overwhelm us to the point of where we leave God out of the out of our lives and we just kind of just float away from from who he is 
But uh, this morning I want to, or this evening, I want to talk to you about uh, continuing that, that same uh, theme about stress. Um, in chapter 40, verse 31 is our main verse. Um, but it says, again, let me read that again. It says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. God has provided for us sufficiency. Sufficiency is simply that term or that word that means it's possible. It's highly possible. Um, we have the ability to carry it out. Um, we have the knowledge of how to use what we have to carry out a task. So we're, we're, we're not alone. Because again, God's word says that he has provided us sufficiency. Sometimes we, we find that sometimes these, these stressors come uh, a lot of times in our spiritual lives. I mean, there, you know, there is those physical things about travel or scheduling or work or other things. Uh, but again, some of those, some of the things that we really have difficulties with is those things that affect our spiritual lives. And sometimes those things tend to just, well, it's going to happen. I'm just going to let it go. I'm just, I'm not even going to worry about it. But we ought to worry about it because again, it's spiritual in nature and that affects our relationship with God. But again, God has provided us the sufficiency through him his word through the power of the Holy Spirit and all these things put together can help us to channel that stress into usefulness or to for, for blessings. And so, but uh, let me, as, as we have read that passage, God has given us some distinct promises. I want to do a couple of them for, for tonight. And the first one is this, is this to fly. And actually there's three in this in this particular verse. Uh, if I can get to the third one, we'll, we'll do that one. But the first one, it, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a simple one, and it says, "Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength." And here's the first one: it says, "They will soar on wings like eagles." They will soar on wings like eagles. It's kind of interesting that Isaiah, with the but the communication that he has with God tells us that in the earlier verses, it says, have you not, do you not know, have you not heard about the Lord, the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He will not grow tired and weary and, who, and his understanding no one can fathom. Isaiah is, is, is showing us that, again, as we live our lives, as humanity there are things that affect us there are those things that that attack us there are those things that uh, will will put a roadblock in your in your daily walk or in, you know the things that are going on and those are those stressors but here he uses an example of an eagle uh, I've heard um, Several, several ministers. Um, for one, if you'll recall, and, you know some of you may have heard, or, you know you've you've heard of him before. Um, Vern Charette. I've heard Vern Charette speak on um, an eagle being an eagle saint. Um, you know he's brought out some very interesting and very applicable points about being an eagle saint. Um, and others, other men, uh, but he is, you know, I guess what him, he's the one of the most recent that I've heard talking about this eagle. And so, but he, again, here he uses the example. And one of the things that you see is that, and you, and you, again, if you research and you look at, and you Google an eagle, his lifestyle, characteristics and such, uh, you'll find out that even when storms approach, you know, he's got usually a solitary nest out there. You know, there's a few around here in Okima. There's one down there by Walika, and it's a, it, they're huge nests. 
I imagine they're probably four or five feet thick or, or, or deep and, and, and wide, you know, I imagine three or four feet wide and it kind of looked like a giant cone made out of the, the limbs and the shrubs of other plants. But they have these huge nests and every once in a while, you can, if you drive by, you can see that white head sticking out. You can see that he's in his nest. Uh, there's another one out west of Okima, close to the river. He's got this giant nest out there, solitary, all by itself in a huge tree, way up where no one can reach. Again, another huge nest. But if you kind of, you know, kind of, you, you notice some things, you'll, you'll notice that he's by the river. He's by the river because, again, he knows that that's a good food source for him. Fish, you know, in the water, and he can swoop down anytime and get what he needs, and, and then he's solitary out there. But again, when, when the eagle sees storms, one of the things that you'll discover is that wherever he builds his nest, he builds his nest very securely. Again, they're very large nests. They're not just these little bird nests, you know, small ones. They're huge. I mean, sometimes about that wide, if you can see my hands in the screen. And when they build their nest, they build them with great strength and great ability. You know, they don't take a course. It's just something that they are born with to be able to protect themselves and their young. But they have this, they, they, they see the storm and it's not something they fear. In fact, the storms enable them. They love the storm. They're enabled to just fly to great heights and when the when the winds begin to change and when the when the, the the cold air cuts into the warm air those those rising air air shafts that go up lift that eagle and he can just he don't even have to flap he can just start rising up into the air but he waits for it and when the winds come he steps off his perch and begins to soar the faster the winds blow the higher the eagle rises and he's able to soar but what the eagle has learned is that what causes others dismay, he sees it somehow as a blessing. And that's the lesson that we see. It's, you know, I'm not telling anybody to go put on an eagle suit or, you know, go eagle watching or anything like that. But the, the lesson we draw from that is that the storm can cause other animals to fear. You know, we had we 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 had a dog. Uh, he's been missing now for about a month, and we don't know where he's at. And he's probably gone. Uh, but whenever the storms came, when thunder and lightning would come, boy, he would he would he, he would just run to his house, even as hot as it was. He'd run to his house because he was afraid, or he would try to get into our garage if the garage was open a little bit. He'd try to get in there because he was afraid of the noise and the in the lightning. Even when he couldn't hear the thunder, he would look off into uh, to the horizon and he would see the lightning flashes and he would get scared. But the eagle, on the other hand, sees these storms as opportunities. And what, again, the, the lesson that we have is that what causes dismay for others, he sees it as a blessing, a source of blessing. And so as Christians... Again, we, we encounter difficult times, tough times, a lot. And so what we ought to see, not, a, not, as a, not as a way to get down or to be upset about it, you know, God doesn't like me or God is trying to punish me or things of that nature, but see it as a blessing, to see it as a way where God makes you stronger. Last time I used an example of my my little, that dumbbell that I have, I have two of them. And again, it's, it's like, it's, it's against me. It's, I have to, I have to use that and lift it. And as I lift it again, it, it, it creates resistance towards me. But overall, as I, as I begin to notice things, I get a little stronger. You know, I'm not, I'm not the, 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 the cut, Arnold Schwarzenegger looking person I used to be, but I still try to stay stronger because I'm still able to do things outside and I want to be stronger. But again, there's that resistance. We get that resistance oftentimes from things that go on around us. And it's always the Christian viewpoint to look at those things, even the difficult times, even the dire times that you face 
as a blessing. Again, the eagle loves the storms and the storms represent this adversity that we have in our life. Um, the eagle, <clears throat> the eagle couldn't fly as high normally unless it was for the storm. <clears throat> but he can fly higher than the storm, but he can also see further the higher he goes. And then he can fly faster as he sees those storms and as he rides the currents of the rising air. He can see further, he can fly faster, and he can fly higher. Again, the lesson for that is that when adversity comes or when the stress comes from those things that cause us adversity, it's always important to know that the Lord never forgets what you're going through. The Lord never forgets the pain that you're having to endure. But the important thing is to reach out to him, cry out to him, and to let him know that he is still on the throne and that he can lead you through these difficult times. You know, I had a very difficult time dealing with, well, actually two of my sisters. I had two sisters that have passed away. One, one sister passed away. It's probably been about 12 years ago now. And she would just call me on the phone about every day, and she would just be crying. Um, my other sister, you know, she she passed away now. It's been about five years ago. Um, she really suffered from the effects of alcoholism. And, you know, as I talked to her, you know, she was <clears throat> she was really in her deathbed. Um, and, it, and, it, and it caused physical reactions for me. Uh, my chest would tighten up because I knew I, I, it, it caused so much stress on me. It caused a lot of anxiety upon me when I was when I was ministering to her as and as as a as a minister and as a brother. And as I walked through those things to their to the time when they passed away, it was difficult. It was really hard. Um, but I'm thankful for my family, my family, my wife. They they were praying for me and our family. And even in those really difficult times, we could see where God had his hand, where God had his direction for us, for our future. Other things that took place. And then my dad, my dad passed away. Now, I talked to my dad the day before he died. We had no, we had no clue that that day a Saturday was the last day I would, you know, I would see and speak to my dad. We talked about his death. We talked about his funeral. And um, the very next day, um, you know, my sister called and she was frantic and told me about, you know, that dad had just collapsed and he was at home. And we were in Norman and uh, we, we, were, we were trying to get home as fast as we could back to Eufaula. But they, you know, you know, again, it was <clears throat> dealing with those things, very traumatic things, and um, seeing how difficult life is and how fragile life is. But in the end, we saw where God was leading. We saw where God was providing. We saw God's comfort. We saw it from his people. We saw it from all, all avenues coming to, to just love on us, to, to help us provide certain things, uh, and then to move forward, to move on to what other things we could do for their families, and like for my sister and her children, um, or both of my sisters and their children and their family. It has been a blessing. You know, I, I know my sister has been a big part of this as well, and what she's been able to do with uh, with my uh, my sister's children. And so, Again, there's a lot of things that we that we can see as tragic and we can be stressed to the point of where we just want to give up. But again, with the perspective of our spiritual lives and knowing what God does, God doesn't weary, God doesn't grow weak. He'll stay strong and he'll continue to provide you with what you need in your life to make what you go through, what you endure, a source of blessing for yourself and for others. The second thing that we understand about this eagle is that, uh, you know, these things 
so, as you study eagles, do the research on eagles, it's one of the things that you'll find out, even as at a young stage in his development, there's a certain point where the mother eagle begins to exercise her authority over them and begins to make them uncomfortable in that nest. You know, inside that nest, there's there's down feathers, there's other things, there may be fur from other animals, but it, there, there, there's created with that net nest a, a comfort zone. But when she knows that it's time for them to begin to do their flying, she begins to make that nest uncomfortable, begins to pick it apart. And sometimes when we look at that lesson, sometimes we get the idea that maybe we, we, we might not understand it all. The outward appearances of what's happening might not make any sense to you. But just like the eagle, as she's beginning to pull that down and exposing the hard limbs or the branches in there, it makes their, her babies uncomfortable. What she's telling them, that it's, it's time for them to get out of the nest and to begin to spread their wings and fly. So she picks that nest apart, but again, it makes them uncomfortable. Again, the lesson we learn is that Again, we might not know what's going on. We might not understand. We might not understand. And we may ask the question, why me? Why me? Why now? Why me? Why now? We don't understand. But sometimes the storms of life that come to us may be the very things that God is using to deliver us or to help us or to cause us to rise higher. Again, there's... Again, he uses the example of a, an eagle, but again, those things are, are, are shown to us to, to teach us the graciousness of God. And then also, there's another one. If you look there, the, the second thing, he uses the uh, example of an eagle. The second thing that you'll see is it, it says, they will run and not grow weary. Um, personally, I've never known a time when I've ever run and I would get weary, you know. Um, there was a time in my life, and it was in my early 20s, 20 to 25, where I used to run all the time. Um, we used to run down to this, it's, it was like a uh, <clears throat> fire, a fire observation place there south of Lawrence, Kansas, when I was going to, when I was going to Haskell. You know, I, I got into working out, you know, lifting weights and walking and running. But we would run down to that that lookout place, that, you know, that firefighter's place or the place where they can see the fire. It wasn't, it wasn't too big of a tower, but it was a landmark. And so we would run down there. It was a gravel road. I mean, it wasn't bad gravel, but it was a, it was a good road. Hardly anybody drove down that road but we would we would run down there and run to that that place that tower fire tower and we'd run back it got so <clears throat> we got so in tune or in shape for doing that uh, and what it was was it was two miles there and two miles back and we would run there and stop and rest you know and stretch out a little bit and just you know just talk and things and and then we'd start walk we, we'd start running back we'd jog, jogging back we'd jog there and jog back and it was about four hours and we did this almost every single day but every day nonetheless i was lifting weights and i would i would run at least two miles every day and so i was running all the time <clears throat> and there was one time i actually ran for about five and a half miles without you know without stopping I got out on a track, well, you know, I call it miles, but we got on a track and I just ran and ran and ran and I kept going and I just felt so good. My breathing was good. My legs felt okay. I wasn't getting tired. I wasn't growing weary. But then, you know, after all that, you know, time comes along and then you try to run. You just can't do it like you used to. And, and I, would, I would have dreams <clears throat> where I was running again. In my dreams, I'd be running wherever I was going. I was running. Um, kind of like uh, Forrest Gump in my mind. I'd be running and just, just because I wanted to run. 
I miss that because I, 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 I did like running. You know, my wife run, she ran in high school. She was a state champion. My kids have run in track in high school. Um, but believe it or not, I used to run a little bit. I never run competitively, but um, <clears throat> there were times that I, you know, now, even now, I can't imagine running, maybe maybe just run out to the car and back. But, um, you know, with, with, with age, sorry, Mary Jo, but with my age, I can't do some of the things physically I used to. I grow weary in doing those things. But again, <clears throat> when we think about this life, the scripture says that they will run and not grow weary. <clears throat> when you think about life in general, we have deadlines. That's a storm. You know, it's a storm. It's a deadline. We have things that need to be done. That's perhaps a storm for some people. Um, we just don't have enough time. We, we, we get time oriented about things and that's a storm. But again, those are, those are just things that, that just pertain to our life. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes what it, what it evolves into is that we feel like we don't have time for God. And, we'll, you know, I, and, and I've seen this all, all along. I, I've seen people that used to come to church, and, 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 and when they miss one Sunday, it's most likely they're going to miss another one. Eventually, that few those few misses become a habit. They begin to miss more and more, and eventually, you don't even see them anymore. And so, you visit with them, and you say, "Hey, what, what is there something that had caused you to start missing the fellowship of the church?" And sometimes they'll, you know, they'll talk. Well, just and and what it boiled down to a lot of times was that they just didn't have time. But as you run this in this rush of life that's going on god also gives us some things it says there there's enough time to do everything that god has purposed in your life there's enough time if we'll just but acknowledge him and we shouldn't insult god by saying that we don't have enough time but sometimes we have to run to get it done a healthy church is always a pertinent thing for me. Uh, I, I've always I, I love being a part of a healthy church. I've been a part of some have that have conflict and, and other other things going on, and it's sad to see that. But I love a healthy church, and I can sense a a, a, a healthy church when it when it's happening, and I can see that in our church. I see what people say and. And sometimes it's late at night when I look at some of these comments, but it's it that those are some things that speak of a healthy church. That's what we need to continually be, not only for our others that have prayer needs, but also for ourselves. You know, we sometimes at work um, we get so busy helping others we forget about ourselves, and that's one thing that we do in our in our program here that I manage is that we we try to take time to focus on ourselves. We're, we're out there every day trying to help our patients, but one of the things we want to do is we want to, we want to turn that attention to ourselves. We try to do things. We take breaks or we get, we gather. We're supposed, we're supposed to have a meeting tomorrow, but it's been canceled because of the weather, but we were going to do some things that just, that was for us getting together and just having uh, creativity time and just, just talking about things and just relaxing and not being out on the road. But we need to pay attention to us as well. Spend time relaxing, breathing. I'm not trying to you know, throw out some Eastern religious practices to anybody. But again, relax, breathe, exercise a little bit, take a walk. Walk out in your yard, stop and pray, uh, do something that where do something that enables you to put your cell phone down, enables something that you can do to to get the media of the day out of your mind and just clear your mind and get out there and do some things that that will help you physically, because when you do things physically, it also affects you mentally. And when those things are are about you, 
it, it's easier to concentrate on your spiritual life as well. Your spiritual life is just as important as you taking a breath, taking a dinner break, those things that you do spiritually. Sometimes, again, we have to run, and sometimes we wake up. We wake up running because we know Satan is there uh, out of like a roaring lion. But again, there are also opportunities in life that we, we, we need to rush to catch and to meet. Again, those could be evangelism in nature. Those can be evangelistic in nature. And so, again, pay attention to yourself. Pray for others, but turn your attention to yourself every once in a while. Do some self-healing for yourself. Breathe. Exercise. Physically, you, you might think, man, well, I thought that don't, don't sound too spiritual, but yet it's a part of it, okay? Um, you know, I try to get some things done. I try to exercise as much as I can. Again, I, uh, finding time to do it is, is difficult, but I have those weights that I showed you at the last video. I, I have them sitting right next to my chair. When I get some time, I sit down, I grab them, and I just start working. I start pumping my weights and, you know, doing different exercises and curls or whatever, uh, just to be able to exercise and, and, and to rid myself of that stress physically. And then when the weather's good, you know, get out there and at midday and go for a walk or go over here to the wellness center uh, to get on the treadmill or whatever it may be. But again, we run in this and it says they will run and not be and not grow weary. And the last thing I want to share with you is it says they will walk and not faint. Walking in this particular uh, this verse speaks of a kind of like the routineness of life. There's a lot of things that are just routine. You know, I <clears throat> I have a time when I set my alarm to go off in the morning. First thing I do is I go wake up Miranda because she's got to get ready for school. Of course, then I get ready, shower, get ready, get dressed. I'm ready to go. She's getting her stuff together. We have a routine. Kirsten leaves to go to work. We get out the door. I go and first thing I ask her as soon as we get in the truck, do you got every, do you have everything? You know, books, laptop, backpacks, practice stuff. First question, do you have everything ready? She'll say yes. So we head on to school. Um, you know, sometimes we get breakfast, sometimes we don't, it just depends. But I get her to school around about 7.35. Um, class doesn't really start until about 8.15, but I have to go on to work. So I drop her off and, you know, I tell her I love her and tell her bye. And I'll, you know, check on her later. Text me if you need me. And so then I come on to work, come into the office. And I get here early, get here before anybody else does. Um, and, I, and, I, and I pray. I pray for our drivers. I pray for our our, our, my co-workers, I'll pray for them and the patients that we transport. I mean, and to just spend time, you know, reading the Bible. Uh, I have the Bible on my phone and sometimes I turn on the voice and just let it read to me. Um, but that's kind of like my day, my routine day. And then we go through the day, have lunch, spend the afternoon staffing different things, different needs, scheduling. And then five o'clock comes go pick up Miranda from practice or from wherever she's at. We go home, we start, we, we kind of take a break, kind of relax a little bit. And then whoever's home first, usually we start dinner. And so we go from there and, you know, dinner and just kind of relax for the evening, help with homework. But again, those things are kind of routine. Those things are the everyday things that we engage in. On the weekends, we may go somewhere. We may take a little trip somewhere, a day trip somewhere. Go, go shopping. Maybe go to Tulsa. You know, if I'm if I'm tired, we'll just we'll just make it to Shawnee or wherever. But we try to do something just to get out of the the, the humdrum of just being at home all the time. So we want to get out there. But again, he says he gives us the strength to walk in the routine times of life. But sometimes it's in these routine times where we find the most trouble. It's not too hard. It's not too difficult. It, it, it's, but, but that's where sometimes we find ourselves failing at times when it's just routine. But it's also, it's, it's most important to learn to walk in the routines of life because this is where we live most of the time. 
It's routine. We go through these times. And what we do, what occupies your mind when things aren't stressful? What occupies your heart when things aren't stressing out on you? What do you think about? It's a good time to pray. It's, it, it's always a good time to pray at any time. But it's also a good time to pray and to just reflect and, again, just to anticipate God's activity in your life moving forward. Um, we have these day-to-day -day things in life that we have to do. But, again, the great need we have is day-by-day -day faithfulness in the little things of life to walk and not faint. Even in the book of Ephesians, <clears throat> it mentions seven times that the Christian life is a walk. It's, it, 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 it talks about it, again, as, as a physical, routine thing. It's a walk that we go through. Um, things to do. You know, some, you know, encourage you. Read the book of Ephesians. And it shows you a lot of practical things you can do in your walk for the Lord. But again, he provides, he provide, God provides for us so that we can do the following. Even in these stressful times, in times of adversity, we can soar like an eagle. Think about that eagle, why he flies. Again, he sees adversity as a way of blessing. He can rise above the storm. He can see further. He can fly fast because of the storm. Doesn't see it as doesn't see it as something that's bad or something that's negative, but he sees it as a blessing. The second thing is opportunity. We run. We run like an athlete. But you just don't start running. You know, there's no way I could get out there and run a mile. I mean, I could probably start and run a little bit here at a time, maybe run a hundred yards, do that for a while and get, you know, just slowly develop myself into better shape where I can run, maybe run a mile someday. But I'd have to be on a goal. I'd have to be on a plan, you know. But as we run, in times of opportunity, we, we run to these things. We run like an athlete because an athlete's strong. There are things about an athlete that enable him to do long runs, and, the, you know, we call that endurance. We can endure these things, these stressors. And then in times of necessity, the everyday necessity things, we keep walking day by day. Again, many of us in our lives have experienced difficult times, <clears throat> tearful times, mournful times, things that we may be afraid of. We may be afraid of the inevitable. Um, but yet God gives us the grace through his word, through his promises, that he will never grow weary. He will never faint. He'll always be with us. And even though we are simply fragile humans, we too can rest in the promises that God, God loves us regardless and that we can give him those difficult times and call on him to lead us. And look at these difficult times as ways of blessings, opportunities, necessities for life, and to rejoice in Him. Again, life as we live it will have its ups and downs. If you haven't had a difficult time in your life, you will. Um, I used to think growing up, that I would hear a lot of bad news and I used to think, oh, we've dodged a bullet in my family, you know. But again, life is life. We realize that we are fragile. You know, again, mom and dad passed away, two sisters have passed away, and a lot of other family. Uh, we just got word recently, just this last week, when one of my cousins was diagnosed with uh, bone cancer. And so she's going through getting testing and wants us to be praying for her as well. But uh, things in life are tough. But with God's grace, we can navigate those tough times. And those tough times make you stronger. Blessings 
towards others and things that are praiseworthy unto the Lord. I want to thank you for joining in. And again, we'll talk more about some things pertaining to pain, to suffering, uh, managing that stress, uh, and other things in person once, we, once we're able to get together. But looking forward to that again. And so hopefully we'll be seeing everybody soon. I'm hearing some good reports on the virus is kind of hopefully waning and praying that way. And so keep praying for that as well. Um, spend some time in prayer. Once this session is over, once we're completed, you know, like, like we did last Sunday, I want to challenge you to take, take 30 minutes and just get alone. Put your phone down. Um, put your iPhone, I, whatever that little watch thing people wear, I see wearing. Put that aside. No distractions. Just get somewhere by yourself. Get your Bible. Read a passage of Scripture. And... Pray for some of these things that you see coming through our chat line. And uh, pray for us. Pray for me. And uh, just continue to pray for our church. And so may God bless you on doing that task as we move forward. Thank you for joining us. And let's close with prayer. Lord, I pray for a blessing upon those who are here. And the things that we go through sometimes are very difficult. But Father, we thank you for your grace. How you lead us and guide us and direct us. Thank you again for loving us. And Lord, thank you most of all that you said you, you, you never faint, you never fail, you never, your, your power never wanes. Lord, it's always there. Just draw us to yourself. Draw us to trust you even more. Thank you, Lord. You are faithful. You are faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.